something wonderful to Jesus. Love your hands. Bring the Holy Ghost. Bring the Holy Ghost. Bring the Holy Ghost. Such a tangible presence of God in this place. Shall Allah buy the Put the hands of of the world where people find themselves in situations of um, depression there is of wickedness on the earth there is so much of deceit here and there then the ministry of the Holy Spirit is very essential in this time and in our days we are in a season where you are fed or faced with so many choices, so many decisions to make. So therefore, you need one who is conversant of the ways of God to aid you and help you in those decision processes of life. And that's why you must um, be very acquainted to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Very quickly, we'll look at four things. Number one is the friendship with the Holy Spirit. Friendship with the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, 26 said, And I will send you the Comforter. When you read the Amplified Version, it tells you that the Comforter is the Counselor, the Helper, the Intercessor, the Advocate, the Strengthener, and the Standby. So what do we benefit from our friendship with the Holy Spirit, number one, is that he becomes our counselor. He counsels you. He inspires your spirit, directs you on how to go about life. He becomes our counselor. Number two, he becomes our helper. Where we need an assistance, the Bible says, he will send us the Holy Spirit. He becomes an intercessor. He becomes our intercessor. 
when we make friendship with the Holy Spirit, these are the benefits we enjoy from that friendship. I said, no man, he becomes our counselor. He counsels us. Give us blueprints for life, blueprint directions. And number two, he becomes our what? Helper. And number three, he becomes our intercessor. He stands in the gap for us. The Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 26 that sometimes we do not know how to pray. But the Spirit of God helps our infirmities with groanings that cannot be uttered by words. I wonder how you can be so strong in the place of prayer without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Human language is limited. When you finish all your listings before God, you are, you are done for it. How do you want to enjoy intimacy and fellowship? If you don't engage the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number four. The Bible says he becomes our advocate. He becomes our advocate. What's our advocate? One that stands to speak for us. Where we are not there but people raise false accusations against us. He stands and says, no. That's not who my child is. Do we understand that? Do you know what people have said about you? And then the Holy Spirit was there to stand in for you and minister to the heart of the people they are trying to condemn you before and say, that's not true. That's not who my daughter is. That's not who my son is. He is our what? Advocate. Are we together? Number five, he is our strengthener. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter four how that when Jesus was tempted by the devil and that is the, the departure of the whole angels we are sent to what? Strengthen him. To impact him with strength. That's why so many are discouraged. That's why so many are frustrated. That's why so many are confused. Why? They've not embraced the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the aspect of what being a strengthener. That in the midst of tiring situations, fearful oppositions, you are supplied with a strength you cannot explain. Are we together? What many couldn't survive? You go through the fire coming out on hot. It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It's not you just deciding and telling yourself, no, I will not be depressed. I will not be discouraged. Many have confessed it and fell into lagoon. It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit that you must what? Embrace. And number six, he is our standby. I explained to you what it means to be a standby understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit as a standby. It simply means that even when you get into trouble, He is right there waiting to help you out of it. He doesn't do like other type of friends who will say, oh, share you feel you don't know. I was telling you not to go like that. And you choose to go away. You will see now. I will leave you there till you suffer very well. No, the Holy Spirit brings us out of that trouble then teaches us where we missed it. He's our what? Stand by. Are we together? So can we recite what we benefit from being friends with the Holy Spirit? Number one, he becomes our what? A counselor. You are just filled with supernatural wisdom. You become a point of counsel even to others and your generation. People come, from, come to you and they can get counsels for life. Are we together? Number two, he becomes what? Our helper. Number three, he becomes our intercessor. He stands in the gap for us. Number four, he becomes our advocate. He defends us where we are not there to defend ourselves. Vindicates us in midst of um, um, false tongues and um, fearful accusations. He stands there for us. Number five, he is our what? Strengthener. He gives us strength needed to survive life's battle. And number six, he is what? A standby. He is always there with him. When we get into trouble, we have someone close by. That could help us out of it. So it simply means if you develop good friendship with the Holy Spirit. No matter how much you have made a mistake or fell into a trouble. You just speak to him. Holy Spirit, help me out of this. I've been into a mess of my life that I think can finish me and end my destiny. But he made messages out of those mess. I've been, been into painful situations I feel that is all about me. But he brought a puppet out of my pain. You can trust him. That's the best friend on earth you can have. And you know one good thing about it? He's reliable. The Holy Spirit is what? A reliable friend. He's not a friend that is just... The Bible says, a friend loveth what? At 
all times. But a brother is born for adversity. So how do we know a friend? The one that lost what? At all times. So the Holy Spirit does not just be a friend to you when it's all good and rosy, even in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your mess and mistakes, he is there to say, just seek my friendship. Tell me to help you. That's my ministry. That's why I'm there. Are we following? So when, whatever the situation, take advantage of his what? Friendship. That's how I live my life. Sometimes I'm in, maybe I, I misplace something, I'm looking for it. I say, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me. And you know the good thing about it is that he lives in the inside of me. So sometimes he doesn't need to tell me where it is. He just walk in me, both to will and to do. Get to the place where that thing is and I find it. Take advantage of his ministry. You can be given a gift and not making use of it. Do we understand that? Take advantage of what? His ministry. Sometimes the Holy Spirit, I am confused. I've been in situations I stuck like that. I said, Holy Spirit, I am confused. I need your counsel in this matter. Tell me what to do. Tell me how to go about this. The problem there is that we want to do everything all by ourselves. The Bible calls him the advantage. Take leverage of what? The advantage. Number two. Two subheading we'll look at tonight is the Lordship of the Holy Spirit. The Lordship of the Holy Spirit. Number one, we talked about friendship with the Holy Spirit and what you benefit from being friends with the Holy Spirit. What your relationship with the Holy Spirit brings to you. And I told us how to engage that. Communicate with him. The Holy Spirit is not a thing. It's a personality. Are we together? Get my message on understanding spiritual manifestations part one and two. I, I dealt uh, um, quite um, briefly on the Holy Spirit. The Lordship of the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians chapter verse 17. The Bible says, but the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord is that spirit. So the Holy Spirit is not a lesser God. He is what? The Lord. If you want to enjoy his ministry in your life, you must come under what? His Lordship. It simply means in the little details of your life, you seek his counsel. Holy Spirit, what clothes should I wear today? I'm teaching you how to develop a walk with the Holy Spirit. You are going out, you look at yourself and say, Holy Spirit directs me to what I will choose. Because per adventure in the realm of the spirit, a level has been given to your destiny helper on how you look at look like. And you choose to wear what you feel like wearing. The Lord is that spirit. I read electrical electronics engineering in my first studies, first class. And while it was time for me to pro continue my study, his counsel and he said, change your course of study. Do this now. And I'm not regretting that. The Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. Bring yourself under his lordship. Most of us lead ourselves consulting when we have entered into trouble. We are the way that cement right to a man. Proverbs 14, 12 has led us into destruction. Then we call him, Holy Ghost, arrive and save me. There's no problem. He will still help you because I told you he's what? The standby. He gets you out of the trouble first. Then tell you what you did that led you into that trouble. Are we together? Embrace his lordship in the little details of your life. When you came this semester, did you tell him you resumed? So you are waiting when they say they want to release results. You say, Holy Ghost, go and meet my lecturers now. <laughs> are we together? Talk to him the way a man talks to him. Holy Spirit, this is my intention. Sometimes my wife is here, yeah, she can testify. You just see me walk through the room like this. Holy Spirit, help me. Tell me this matter. Holy Spirit, help me. That's my life. Then he inspires my spirit. I can trust what he says because I asked him. If I make a call right now to bro Samuel, who should I be expecting to pick my call? Samuel. So I won't trust what I'm hearing if I've not asked him about it. But if I said, Holy Spirit, help me, then it comes into my heart as a thought. I believe he's the one responding to me. Do we understand that? Number three. The power and the gift of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians and chapter 12. 
The Bible tells us how we need to covet earnestly desire, desiring the more earnest gift for our ability to do effectively. These are our tools for the fulfilling of our what? Ministry. I won't dwell much on that. Number four, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5 and verse 22 to 23 tells us about his attributes. Things we can see and say this looks like the Holy Spirit. The Bible said the fruit of the Holy Spirit is this love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, meekness, gentleness, temperance, and self-control. The fruit of the what? Holy Spirit. Before that, you get to Galatians 5 and verse 19. tells us of the work of the flesh. So it simply means it is worked out. But the fruit is produced naturally when the branch is attached to what? The vine. It manifests out of you without much effort. Do we understand that? Very quickly, cultivating the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life cultivating the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Number one, cultivate deep hunger and desire and passion for the Holy Spirit. I've told you about his benefits, what you enjoy from his friendship. I've told you the need to stay under his lordship. But how do you first cultivate the tangibility of his presence upon your life? Number one, I said cultivate deep desire and hunger. For the Holy Spirit. Psalm 63 and verse 1 to 2. John chapter 7 verse 37 to 39. Let me read John 37, 37 to 39. The Bible says, and in that great day of the feast, Jesus called to them and said, if anyone thirsts, let him come unto me, for out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Next verse, the Bible said, take him of the Holy Spirit out of his belly shall flow rivers of what? Water. If anyone thirst, So the foundational truth for cultivating the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit is to what? Desire it. More of you. More of you. More of you. Jesus more of you. Because the Holy Spirit does not force himself on people. Tell your neighbor the Holy Spirit does not force himself on people. You must desire and thirst after him. Tell your neighbor you must desire and thirst after him. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Cultivate deep hunger and desire for the Holy Spirit. Number two, fellowship. Cultivate fellowship. You can't carry the tangible presence of the Holy Ghost if you are not one given to fellowship till a point you become fellows of dissentship. You can't. When you stay so much with a fire in front of you, after certain minutes, hours, you begin to have the transference of the properties and the attributes of that fire on your body. Is that not so? Till a point you begin to feel the heat of the fire. Culture fellowship. You can't carry his presence if you don't spend time with him. Are we together? Not only when they declare general church retreat. That's when you come and say, ah, I'm trying to spend time with the Holy Ghost. No! Acts 13 and verse 1 to 2. The Bible says, and in that day, there were certain prophets and teachers. They be listed verse 2. And as they begin to minister to the Lord, cultivating fellowship, the, the, the Holy Ghost spoke. Separate from me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work. The Holy Spirit spoke in the midst of fellowship. Are we together in the midst of fellowship? Luke chapter 4 and verse 14. The Bible is after Jesus had spent 40 days in the wilderness. Fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that he returned back in the power of the Spirit. He carried the tangible presence of the Holy Ghost. That at his appearance demons flee. Without him saying a word. The presence was so mighty upon him. They could feel it. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31 say, when we learn to wait, we will mount up with strength as eagles. We will walk and not be weary. We will run and not faint. Are we together? Cultivate fellowship. Number three, cultivate rugged obedience when it is not convenient or does not appeal to logic. Cultivate rugged obedience even when it is not convenient or does not appeal to logic. Hebrews 3 and verse 15 Hebrews 5 verse 7, the Bible says, little children, 
today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart because one thing I know about the Holy Ghost is that he will begin to speak to you speak to you through many means some of you can decide to ignore it when you know clearly in your spirit that God is leading me through this direction you cancel it by the blood of Jesus <laughs> he said do not what harden your heart it is a possibility that the Holy Spirit take this step do these things my son do these things my daughter and you harden your heart because you want to go your own way and do it in your own way possibly it will, it will belittle your ego the Holy Spirit can say please go apologize to Sister Grace say, God forbid even God that asks you to do it you are forbidden <laughs> little children when you hear his voice do not harden your heart are we together so cultivate rugged obedience even when it is not what convenient or does not appeal to what your logic number four know his love language know his love language John 16 and verse 14 that is his love language the Bible says he shall glorify me when you glorify Jesus you have given the Holy Ghost food to me he shall glorify me know his love language number five give him control give him control first Thessalonians 5 and verse 19 second Corinthians 13 and verse um, 3 and verse 17 give him control I won't dwell on that since I talked about the lordship of the Holy Spirit allow him to direct the affairs of your life you want to eat right now and the Holy Spirit said drop the food drop it you know we just learned that you should not add in your heart because some of you that's how they will kill you not as if you didn't hear him he says son this is poison drop the food you say holy ghost I cancel the poison <laughs> you know the way we do our Christianity is so funny <laughs> I remember one time I told a young man I said please the Holy Spirit is leading me to ask you to fast take a fast I think for three days there about not knowing that, that by the time I send that message to him he just prepared a very wonderful legacy soup and while my message unfortunately because it's not a fortunate message came towards his direction he looked at my message and looked at the soup he tried his best the soup said no behold <laughs> and he told himself I will be pardon on him but let me be done with the soup then I do the three days by the time he made correct a bar and dipped a spoon something just tell him you can trade your crypto that's why he transferred his crypto to a wrong wallet you can't be wiser than God do. are we following don't play smart with him I'm teaching you from certain things not just from scripture alone from even practical experiences of how you can try to be smart with him at the end of the day you find out that you are not really smart are we together Number six, trust even when you don't understand. Trust him even when you don't understand. Trust him. Say to him, Holy Spirit, I might not know what you are doing, but I trust you. Number seven, have a clean conscience before God. Have a clean conscience before God. Isaiah 59 verse 1 to 2 and Psalm 24. Confidence grows in an atmosphere of clean conscience and that's the, the pain of sin sin comes to defile your conscience to a point you don't even trust what the holy spirit can say to you do we understand that have a what clean conscience run away from anything that defies your conscience that's when you begin to say i don't know it's my spirit or whether it's my voice i don't know whether it's my body or whether it's my soul because your conscience has been defied number eight Live a life of meekness and humility. Live a life of meekness and humility. Isaiah 57 and verse 15. Where your pride increases, his presence decreases. If you are full of yourself, you'll be empty of the Holy Spirit. Where your pride increases, his presence decreases. If you're full of yourself, you'll be empty of the Holy Spirit. So cultivate the life of meekness and what? Humility. Number nine cultivate a life of deep worship and reverence for Jesus 
cultivate a life of deep worship and reverence for Jesus. Psalm 89 verse 15, Psalm 22 verse 3 tells us that he inhabits himself in the praises of his people. He dwells there. So when you are a worshiper, you find out that the Holy Spirit tries to dwell more, come upon you. Are we following? Zephaniah and verse 10, the Bible says he breathes over us. He broods with singing. He broods with singing. So cultivate a life of deep worship and reverence for Jesus. Psalm 89 verse 15, Psalm 22 verse 3, and Psalm 100 verse 4. Deep worshippers always carry intense presence. Deep worshippers always carry intense presence. If you, if you don't know how to worship, it doesn't matter the, the quality of your voice. Just sing to him. He understands and love it that way. Even though you improve the voice, okay? Worship is a song of voice, but how your heart appears. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Where is all about you? It's all about you, Jesus. Are we together? Number 10. Get away from guilt and regrets. Get away from guilt and regrets. Mistakes happen, but your life should move forward. By the time you live so much in mistakes and regrets, you don't give the Holy Ghost a conducive atmosphere to stay around you and upon you. Get away from guilt and regret. You are not your mistake. Tell your neighbor you are not your mistake. And anyone who defines you by your mistake, say it, anyone who defines you by your mistake is a dog. The Bible says in Philippians, I think 3 and verse 2, it says, beware of what? Dogs. Beware of the concision. You know what dogs are? The ability is to go dig your past to use it to define your presence. You know that's what dog does? It goes to a dustbin, it pulls it down and removes the dirt from it. The Bible says, beware of dogs. Even in your phone, don't they tell you system updates? Tell your neighbor, this is my update version. You are the one behind time. The way you knew me 10 years ago does not mean that's who I am again. I have updated myself. No one should define you or conclude you by your mistakes. Are we following tonight? Number 11. Cultivate the life of deep light and insight into God's word. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. To get into God, you must get into his word. To get into God, you must get into his word. You see, I'm taking message because it's a practical teaching. I want us to have a solid walk with the Holy Spirit. Alright? Very quickly, how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. How to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. This will be my last official message as one based in an atmosphere like this. If I come here the next time, it will be as a visitor. How to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Number one, talk to the Holy Spirit, asking for his counsel. He won't force himself to speak to you. Are we together? Talk to him. You are in the midst of a confusion. Say, Holy Spirit, tell me the way out. Tell me what to do about this matter. Seek his counsel. Don't live in confusion when you have been given an helper. Take advantage of ministry. I just finished prophesying that you will receive strange favors. And as you are going out of this place, somebody told you your behavior has been deactivated. You say, Papa has spoken. No, your point in time is to say, Holy Spirit, is this your voice? Are we following? As when they dupe you, it doesn't concern me. That I said, my, I gave you a prophetic word. I didn't tell you that it will come through that way. Because that's why how we fall victims into things. I can say right now, young lady, stand up. I see you getting married to a man called Stanley. And then the devil hears my prophetic word. And go before time to arrange a Stanley for her. Then she dies with the word I said. And say, behold, the Lord's anointed. But the voice of the Holy Spirit is there to tell you, yes, daughter, I said you will marry a young man called Stanley, but this is not the Stanley I talked about. That's where many has made mistakes in life because they've glued to the word of God or from God and left the God who gave the word. So when he's telling you, don't kill Isaac again, you say, but I heard that I should kill him. You collected the word and went without the God who gave you the word not knowing he can still speak again. Are we getting blessed tonight? So talk to what? Talk to him. Number two. 
how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit through people after you have prayed. Through people after you have prayed. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1. He said, I will stand upon my watch and I will watch to see what he has to say. So after praying, what will I do? I will begin to watch. Maybe I prayed about a business idea and suddenly I just get in the midst of people, they start discussing about it. I get to this person, somebody tells me about it. I get to this one, I can trust that because I have prayed. Are we following Proverbs and chapter 11 verse 14? The Bible says, in the multitudes of counselors, there is safety. Proverbs 15, 22, in the multitude of counselors, there is what? Proverbs 24 verse 6, in the multitude of counselors, there is what? Safety. Number three, how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit through circumstances. There is a language when certain things behave the way they are not supposed to behave. That's why the donkey shouted at his master at Balaam. I said, oh God, you should be sound a prophet enough to understand that I was not behaving like this before. If suddenly I'm now behaving in a different way, I'm giving you a voice. Do we understand that? Through what? Circumstances. You can give a message. Number four, through the still small voice. Number five, through the Bible. As you study God's word, he can come up bringing forth revelations from his words to you. And number six, through books and tapes. As you study the tapes of anointed men, God can speak to you through their writings, through books and tapes. Number seven, through dreams and vision. Number seven, through dreams and vision. Acts chapter 16, verse 9 to 10. Paul said, and in the vision of the night, I saw a man of Macedonia appearing to me and bidding me to come. And I perceive that the Holy Ghost wants us to go there. I what? Perceive that by that vision, by that revelation, God is wanting to lead me through that way. If you want to learn more about visions and dreams, message on prophecy, visions and dreams, part one and part two. Number eight, through faint imaginations and thoughts. Faint imaginations. God flood your heart with a thought, with an imagination. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. Number nine, through your five spiritual senses. Through your five spiritual senses. Get my message on the hearing, ear and the seeing eyes. You understand the five spiritual senses. Number ten, through God's servants. As you are in church now, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Are we together? Luke chapter 16 verse 29. And the rich man said, Please send Lazarus down to the earth so that my brothers will not be where I am. And Abraham replied, But they have the prophet. They should hear from them. <laughs> so when somebody tells you somebody came back from the dead to give you a message, it's not as valid as what the Bible or the servants of God are alive on the earth. Did you see that? Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and what? The prophet. Let them hear them. That's the modus operandi. He raises men. The Bible says he gave gift to men. Some to be called this and this and this. And he kept them in the church for the equipping and the perfecting of the saints. You don't need somebody to come from the dead to make you know that Jesus is real. He said, let him hear them. Are we following those? Through God's servants, you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the counsel. Stop looking for revelation where wisdom is applicable. God will not reveal to you what knows his wisdom on your life can undo. Are we following? There are certain things you already seen the signs. You know how it is. You want to know that it's God's voice. A young man is beating you mercilessly as if he's magnetizing in relationship. And you say, Holy Spirit, move me now. Make my life all okay. May I hear your voice tonight? You will hear nothing. Don't wait for revelation where wisdom is what? Tell your neighbor God did not create a robot. He gave you brain. He gave you brain. And put your brain to... Finally, how to test the leading of the Holy Spirit. How to test the leading of the Holy Spirit. Have we learned something tonight? That's why I'm not vibrating on the message. I want to... Galatians chapter 4, 5, verse 22 to 23 tells us about the fruit of the Spirit. And it's from the fruit of the Spirit we can check and use that as a litmus test to know when the Holy Spirit is leading you. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, the Bible says, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, what 
lovely, worthy of praise, of good report, think on these things. So if things does not resemble like that, we know that it's not God. Is that not so? Number one, how to test the leading of the Holy Spirit. So is there, number one, anger, bitterness, and hatred. You say God is leading you. And that leading is tearing up what? Anger, bitterness, and hatred. That's not the Holy Ghost. Because you can't have the Holy Spirit and behave like an evil spirit. Hate people, hate people. What did I say again? Hate people, hate people. You can't have the Holy Spirit and behave like an evil spirit. You are operating in bitterness, anger, and hatred. How do we know this is totally wrong? For the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. That's the first thing that checks it. So under this you can write... The fruit of the Holy Spirit is love and forgiveness. So that's how we checkmate that. When we see anger in display, no matter you say, I heard the voice, it was shouting, hello, hello, hello. I say, young man, young lady, go and sit down. You heard nothing. That's not his voice. Please understand that the Bible says there are many spirits that have gone into the world. First John 4, right? There are many spirits that have gone into the world. It's your job to discern adequately. And that's why I'm equipping you on how to survive the times. Yes, you get to a point you are frustrated, depressed, confused, don't know what to do, where to go, what step to take. Once there is anger, bitterness, hatred, no, not the Holy Ghost. Because sometimes many people are suffering from internal bleeding and can be reacting through their internal bleeding can begin to give them prophetic words. Are we following? They can begin to get inspiration from their pain. You know there is a voice in every pain. Determine, de de depending on the type of pain and the type of voice you are hearing. So from your eternal bleeding and pain, you can begin to get an inspiration and think the Holy Ghost is leading you. Have you not seen people who had a broken relationship and they made a vow? From that pain, they got an inspiration that I will show men. Pepe. Andrew, Pepe. Do you see Pepe? And they, had, they felt it in their spirit. In fact, something moved them. Number two. Is there confusion and doubt? You said that the Holy Spirit is leading you. And you are in, it leads you into a state of confusion. No, his job is to bring you out of confusion. Not to carry you inside one. Once there is confusion and doubt. That's not the leading of the Holy Spirit. Check it very well. Is that okay? First Corinthians 14 40. Say, let everything be done decently and in order. So, one of his operations is what? Order. Are we following? Is what? Order. Number three, fear. Is there fear? God is leading you to a marriage of a man you're afraid of. <laughs> they will still arrange your coffin. Is there fear? in that thing. First Timothy, or second and verse 7, the Bible says, but we have not been given the spirit of what? Fear, but of boldness and of what? Sound mind. First John 4, I think and verse 16 there about, he said, for fear had torment. Fear had torment. It is tormenting. Are we together? Romans 8 and verse 15, he said, but we have been given the spirit, not, not the spirit of, we have been given the spirit of adoption not to fear. Are we together? Number 3, number 4, anxiety. Is there anxiety? Are we learning anything tonight? Is there what? Anxiety. You find that, that you say the Lord is, uh, Holy Spirit is leading you, but you are just full of anxiety. Philippians 4, 6 to 7 said, be anxious for nothing. So when there is anxiousness, there is the presence of some things here that is not the Holy Spirit. Is there what? Anxiety. The fruit of the Spirit, Holy Spirit is what? Love, joy, and what? Peace. So when we are not seeing the fruit present, we know something else is manifesting there. His fruit is what? Peace. And the opposite of peace is what? Anxiety. Do we understand that? Number five. Is it anti-scriptures and anti-Christ? Is it anti-scriptures and anti-Christ? Why? The Holy Spirit will not go against God's word and principles. You heard a voice say you should go and marry somebody's wife. You know, people do so many stupid things. That's why I'm taking the pain to give us like this. One by one, you, you get the wisdom. And you're not deceived by the times of the age. Are we following? Is it anti-scriptures? Is it anti-Christ? Does it look like this is not how Christ behaves? The Holy Spirit will never go out against God's word. 
please no matter how you try to paint it no matter how you try to color it the Holy Ghost will never go against God's word never forget we read in John 16 14 that his job is to glorify Jesus so when the thing is anti-Christ and anti-scriptures it's not the Holy Spirit you are in school and you say the Holy Spirit led you to travel to a different state to go and see your boyfriend say I'm going by the leadings of the Spirit may what led you take you safely tell your neighbor whatever is leading you <laughs> may it take you safely are we together number six division is their division strife, disgrace destructions of life families and ministry that's not the Holy Ghost it's the spirit of what? love he will not lead you to say things or take action that will bring division, disgrace people destroy lives and families it's not the Holy Ghost that's why even the operation of a prophetic gift there are ways you handle family situations that you don't spoil the family because you can be in the leading or in the manifestation of your gift and not be sponsored by the Holy Ghost because you just want to manifest the gift and you destroy homes destroy families scatter places are we following that's not the Holy Ghost so check you see the Lord is leading me let me just call this sister out and this guy here now that come come here do you know you are slept with 50 men that's not the Holy Ghost leading you. Are we following? He doesn't disgrace people. Are we together? He doesn't bring division. He doesn't destroy lives. He doesn't destroy families. So be careful what you are manifesting and thinking God is leading you. Number one, impatience. Aha, this one answers to all of us now. Impatience. I remember when La Buena Bida came out. After they do seminar for you, they say the first 10 slots you start borrowing money, you're under pressure like something is moving you. <laughs> you want to what? Japa. Is it that Japa? That's what they call it, Abi. You want to fall. When there is, because the spirit, the Bible said the fruit of the spirit is what? Patience. So where we see impatience, I cannot just wait. The only go say move, make haste. Go nana. We know that you want to get somewhere else. That's how we check it. And every time people lose money or they are duped, one of the presents is uh, you, you, what you can see an attribute there is what impatience you are put under pressure not to reason and think say act fast this is how your financial fortune will change <laughs> and the person telling you she's like this it has chopped for most <laughs> if that's how it is you think nigerians are not are that nice to share things that will change your life are we together impatience number eight depression and stress is there depression and stress the Holy Ghost led you to take a decision and it is putting you under depression and stress. You are not being led by the Spirit. Something else is talking to you. How do we know? The Holy Spirit fruit is what? Joy. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is what? Joy. So you can use this fruit to check when something is not Him. Where there is depression and stress, we say that is not what? The Holy Spirit. Number nine. Is there pride, ego and arrogance? Is their pride, ego, and arrogance. The only thing say, go apologize. He say, God, they will now make it look like he, he will not be feeling himself. She will not be feeling herself now if I say, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not the Holy Spirit. Because the spirit, fruit of the Spirit is what? Meekness, gentleness. Are we together? The fruit of the Spirit is what? Meekness, gentleness. Led by the strong. Then, is their wickedness. their wickedness. Have you gotten to a point that you are being led to seek the downfall of others? The fruit of the Spirit, but goodness. It wishes good for others. That's not the Holy Spirit leading you. A false spirit has taken a hold of you. It's their wickedness. Evil, what will cause people pain. That's not the Holy Spirit. Number 11 is their lack of self-control. Their lack of self what control, so I cannot control myself because the fruit of the spirit is what self control. And number 12 is their condemnation. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of conviction and not what condemnation is their condemnation. And number 13, does it glorify Jesus? John 16 and verse 14, did it glorify Jesus? John 16 and verse 15, does it glorify what Jesus that thing you want to do that you say the God is leading you. 
does it bring glory to the name of Christ? Ask yourself that question. Are we together? That way you want to behave. That action you want to take. Will it promote the name of Christ? If other people should hear about it, will they see it that this is a good step I've taken? This is what Christianity is all about. Now listen, I've always told us, it doesn't matter what you hear on the internet. It doesn't matter. Social media is not our Bible. It doesn't matter who posted it or how sound it, how good it might look like. God's word remains the supreme. Are we following? Stop getting your revelation and the culture of your life from social media. Make God's word the standard for your living. Make God's word what? The standard for your living. We have followed social media gospel and we are having the highest rate of divorce in the history of the world on daily basis. So has it worked for you? You are following social media rule. You are having every kind of trouble with your relationships. Quarreling with everybody. You see, you can't get to a point where you have issues with everybody. Then you are the issue. If you have issues with one person, we understand. But when it's everybody you have an issue with, then you are what? The issue. Stand up to your feet quickly. Holy Spirit. Please talk to God tonight. And say, Lord, help me. Holy Spirit. I want more of your presence on my life. That's the prayer tonight. Talk to God. Talk to God and say, Holy Spirit, I've learned of your word. I want more of your presence in my life. I want more of your presence in my life. Holy Spirit, I want more of your presence in my life. Please say that, say that, say that. Shadeka brando saparadi la cosa brande la hashkaya na malaga da hasaida. E brebe bebe leleke preno saprana gloco vara zenda black di criando sala yaga vila katus. Prenende geleleke cruen shala brada gasambra balanda gavrilo cosandia la gavila kaj. E bre mango siala garogo de gadosha. In Jesus' name of prayer. Pray and say, Lord, I receive grace to cultivate a solid work with the Holy Spirit today. I don't want you to end up as a church secretary that you just copy note and go home. I'm not impressed. The impression that we have is when I see the word of God work for you. Are we following? Tell your neighbor the word is working in my life. I produce fruit according to the word. The word of God is working in me. It is growing mightily in my life. That's what I want to see. That's why I took the pain. I didn't need to shout. I needed to give you step by step so that you can go back and look at it again. When you are confused, pick it and say, let me check. I've been taught what is the litmus test to check if this is the Holy Spirit. You see it, you say, no. God is not leading me to take this thing. Something else is speaking to me. You can, you can get voices from bitterness. You can get voices from hunger. Are we following? You can get voices from pain. Painful situation can give you an inspiration. And you think the Holy Spirit is leading you to take a step. It doesn't matter whether you are worshipping or yet. <laughs> if it is born out of pain, it's not him now. <laughs> are we following? Lord, I receive grace to put your word to work. Turn that to prayer quickly. Quickly, we just have two prayers and we are done tonight. <laughs> Lord, I receive grace. Lord, I receive grace to put your words to work in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, I introduce everyone here tonight to you. Make them your friend. Walk with them from today. Let your relationship with each and every one of them be strengthened from tonight. As you go to rest, rest in encounters. Rest in divine revelations. Rest in the workings of the Spirit. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Watch your heart cry to Him. Tell Him whatever you want for what you have learned tonight. Holy Ghost, talk to Him, talk to Him, Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost.
Holy Spirit, 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 Holy Spirit. Lift up your hands everywhere. May your walk with the Holy Ghost from today be strengthened. I declare and I declare, may your relationship with the Holy Spirit be rebuilt from tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree, may your whole walk with the Holy Spirit be rebuilt from tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I connect you to divine encounters. Amen. I strengthen your walk with the Holy Ghost. Amen. May fresh fire come upon your life for fellowship. Amen. May deep hunger and thirst for the workings of the Holy Spirit in your Amen. life increase. In the name of Jesus, you will never be confused again. Amen. You will never be depressed again. Amen. You will never be frustrated in life. Amen. You will not make mistakes that will cost you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I prophesy the voice of the Holy Spirit will not be scarce around your life. I prophesy the voice of the Holy Spirit will not be scarce around your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But there is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty. Give it that man understanding. I quicken the spirit of God in the inside of you. Amen. From today may you walk in understanding. Amen. May you walk in understanding. Amen. May you walk in understanding. Amen. May you walk in understanding Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Three things I have to do and I'm done tonight. All firstborn, lift up your hand. One thing, the firstborn is the first of the offspring. And one of the things the devil does is to attack the life of firstborn. You see them going through difficult situations, painful experiences of life. Because he knows he can finish the first offspring of that family he can from that point get the entire family most of the time he diverts their destiny scatter and or, 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 or treat their lies and god said pray for the firstborn the secondborn and the lastborn i prophesy every siege over your life has been born every demonic pattern flowing through your bloodline flowing through your generation every cause hanging on your life as a firstborn is broken now it is broken now say oh god every siege on my life break now say it like you mean it oh god every siege on my life breaks now breaks now breaks now breaks now Every battle of firstborn, every battle of the firstborns, I declare and I declare, you are delivered from it now. Amen. Your amen is not born again. I decree you are delivered from it now. Amen. You are delivered from it now. Amen. You are delivered from it now. Amen. Your ways are hereby open. Amen. I stand in the capacity of my call. I speak as the prophet of God. Your ways are hereby open. Amen. Your ways are hereby open. Amen. Every mountain before you is made plain. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every delay that is attached to the life of the firstborn. Every struggle. I decree over your life, it is broken now. Amen. I decree over your life, it is broken now. Amen. I decree over your life, it is broken now. Amen. Every pain of your bloodline that is hanging on your head, every cause, every demonic agreement and covenant that you have carried as the firstborn, Every battle surrounding your destiny. Pray in the Holy Ghost one minute. I declare and I declare it is broken now. It is broken now. In the name of Jesus. Second one, lift up your hands. After tonight, just watch your life. Is that okay? Those of you that came for the meeting and have prayed for you, watch your life from tonight. It's a divine instruction and I've obeyed God's instruction. He said, break them free. 
some of them their life they tried all they could it looks like something it's called the battles of the firstborn battles of the firstborn you know secondborn one of the problem with secondborn is that their life is never balanced you know you have two eyes two ears two hands two legs that signify what balance so you see secondborn they can have one way good there will be one couscous attached their life is never balanced i declare and i declare every imbalance around your life as a second born become balanced now amen in the name of jesus amen every imbalance around your life receive balance now amen every yoke is broken amen every yoke is broken amen every battle of the second born is broken amen in the name of jesus amen. in the name of jesus amen. you are breaking through amen. you are breaking through amen. you are life breaking your destiny amen. life breaking your family amen. in the name of jesus amen. I pray for all the last one right now. Lift up your hand. That you are the last one, you will not be last in life. Amen. Say after me, I will not be last in life. I will not be last in life. I will not be last in life. Every yoke of the devil and the battles of the last one over your life is broken now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Everybody, lift up your hands. Say this after me. Oh God, oh God, my ways are open. My ways are open. I liberate my family tonight. I liberate my family. I am coming tonight. out from every hose of the devil. Coming out from every I am breaking of loose of right from every shackles of hell. Breaking loose from every In the name of, of Jesus. Amen. My star is shining. My star is shining. My glory is risen. My, glory is my risen. ways are open. My ways are my open. Heavens are open. My heavens are my open. Help us remember. My help us remember. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Amen. The Lord be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. Amen. And the Lord grant you his peace. Amen. You will never be small in life. Amen. I prophesy you will never be small in life. Amen. Your greatness we know no bound. Amen. I decree that doors of nations are open for you. Amen. Doors of nations are open for you. Amen. Doors of nations are open for you. Amen. In one minute, ask God whatever you want him to do for you. Ask him anything. Your grace, my life has changed. I will never be the same. I'll touch your grace, my life has changed. Oh, I will never be the same. I'll touch your grace, my life has changed. everyone be very sensitive now I prophesy whatever you have asked of God tonight may he do it for you amen I prophesy may God do it for you amen may he make his face to shine on you amen may his favor shine on you amen may you go and come back with a testimony all through this week amen in the name of Jesus amen finally tonight family I pray this final prayer for you. Lift up your hand. Whatever you have seen operation in my life, whatever that is a demand for your life and you want to place a demand on the mantle of God upon my life, as I move to another new phase of my call and assignment and depart officially from an, this environment, 
I pray for that duplication of grace. I pray. Just strike the symbols for me. Lord, to as many that are desirous of this grace, to as many that want this anointing, I place a demands upon the heavens right now. I place a demands upon the heavens right now. Take it from my life and place it upon them. In the name of Jesus. Take it on my life and place it upon them. Take of your fire, your grace, your unction, your anointing. If you want it, you can have it. Lord, I break open my oil upon this house tonight. I transfer grace. I transfer grace. I transfer grace. I transfer grace. May I not leave this environment without anyone catching this fire. If they can see me while I'm taking. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, to as many that are hungry, let the fire fall on them. Let the fire fall. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before I lift up your hands, let me bless you. Lord, let the angels of worship begin to walk with them from today. In the name of Jesus. I declare and I declare that God will raise among you worship ministers and your voice will be heard across the globe and nations. In the name of Jesus. You want to say, Pastor, please help me. I want to be born again. All right? Oh, I want to dedicate my life. My work with God is no longer strong. It's nothing to write home about. I want the Holy Ghost to come mind upon my life and help me to live the Christian race. Please, wherever you are, you are in any of this category, let me see your hands up. Very quickly, let me see your hands up. It's a wonderful decision you want to take tonight. I want to strengthen my work with God. I want to know Jesus better. I want the Holy Ghost to come fresh upon me tonight. Wherever you are, let me see your hand. If you are waving, if your hands are up, let me see it well. Let me see your hands. Please wave it up. Let me see your hands up. Thank you, our Father. If you are doing so, please come to the front. If you are waving your hands, please come to the front. If you are in any of these categories, please come very quickly. Let me pray with you. Lift up your hands. Lord, I release a blessing upon your people. Let your blessings sit upon them. Let your hands be strong upon them. I decree you blessed. Enjoy uncommon favor. God's grace shines upon you. God bless you. Thank you for listening. We trust you have been blessed. You can stay empowered by connecting to us on Facebook at Grace Realm Ministries International, Instagram at Grace Realm Global, and Telegram at Grace Realm Channel. You can follow us on our online radio at www dot forward slash mixlr dot com forward slash grace realm you can also contact the following helplines 0812-2477-859 or 0813-038-2222